Hello, everyone. My name is David Geyer, and I'm the product manager for Windows Updates and Intune. And we're doing this recording from beautiful Kingston, Washington, which is about 25 miles northwest of Redmond. Thank you for taking the time to join me. I'm going to provide an update on the developments we've been working on closely with the Windows Update for Business Deployment Service team. And we're really excited about what we're able to bring to you this year and next year. I'm first going to provide an update on the long-awaited general availability of feature update profiles and expedited quality updates and recap all the great stuff included. I'll then provide an update on drivers and firmware management, where we are and when we're expecting to make it available via public release. And then I'll briefly talk about the next big thing, quality update management. We are very much looking forward to removing the preview tags and making feature update and expedited quality updates available in general availability by the end of the year. This will include the reports and failure monitoring as well. So let's take a moment to review these features and the top reasons why you should plan to move to these now if you've been waiting for these to come out of preview. Feature update profiles make it much easier to plan and deploy feature updates. First, you get to specify exactly which feature update is being offered to devices, including upgrading to Windows 11 or staying on Windows 10 for those devices that aren't eligible to upgrade. By selecting the specific update, you can also keep devices on that version until you move to the next feature update level. We've also added even better scheduling controls. You no longer have to try to calculate the deferral days you need in order to get the update to start on the day you want. Just set the date. Keep in mind that this is the start date. Devices still need to scan, download, install, and reboot to complete the update which will take from several hours to several days, depending on the device and the end user. In addition, there's gradual rollout, where you are able to distribute the updates between the start and end dates you specify and at the frequency you set. As an added bonus, if you enable the Allow Woofby Cloud Processing setting, the intelligent rollout is enabled, which uses cloud intelligence around the characteristics of all the devices in the policy to enable finding any issues at the start of the rollout, affecting as few devices and users as possible. More details, including rollout examples and steps on configuring that policy in Intune, are in the Intune docs online. And a detailed explanation of how gradual and intelligent rollouts work from David Mebin of the Windows Update for Business Deployment Service team is at AKAMS Gradual Rollouts with Woofbee. And again, the final group availability date is the last date that the updates will be made available to all the devices in the policy. And so the actual time to get those devices completed with the install depends on download, install, and reboot times. Expedited quality updates work smoothly with the update ring profiles to temporarily override those settings to install an update as fast as possible, and then return the device to normal settings once updated. And choosing the number of days before the restart is enforced gives you the ability to determine the best balance between how long users have control over when to reboot versus ensuring the updates are completed on time. So now that we've gone over the new cloud-based update policy types, how do you use those in junction with update ring policies, especially while we're still completing our journey to the cloud and only some Windows update types are supported with the new policies? Well. Start with your update rings policy, which even as we add new policies with enhanced controls for driver and quality updates, will still be the way to configure overall device behavior. Today, the Windows Update client is optimized for a great user experience while reliably delivering updates. So we recommend basically using the default settings except for a few things. Configure your quality update deferral especially to create update rings using multiple policies with different deferrals so that you can provide that layer of validation before updating your broad organization. Set the feature update deferral to zero days so that you can use the feature update profiles and gradual rollouts we just talked about and the reports that we're going to talk about next. And finally, set your feature and quality update deadlines. We recommend seven days for feature, three days for quality, and a two-day grace period. If you have special cases where these settings are not the best fit, I recommend reading Aria's blog 
on which policies to set and why. And aka.ms set these policies. It covers the standard information worker desktop configuration we just went over and other scenarios like high availability devices for kiosks, manufacturing, point of sales, and some other special use scenarios, all of which can be configured in update ring profiles. We then recommend you use feature update policies for feature updates. A pro tip is not wait until you are ready to roll out the next feature update version. Create a policy now targeting your current feature update build, and this will enroll devices for feature update management and pin them to that version until you create a policy that targets a newer version. And then use expedite policies when you need a quality update to deploy faster than your normal settings. And both Feature and Expedite come with the same basic reports, giving much more detail and insights into how each policy is progressing. The status report shows a top-level summary of how many devices have succeeded, have errors, or are still in progress. In the details, each device in the policy is shown with its current detailed status. In fact, in progress is broken out to show when the service has made the offer ready, when the device is downloading, installing, or waiting to reboot. The failure reports in Monitor show each failure or alert, and clicking on those provides a more detailed description of what the problem is, and also a recommendation for how to fix the problem. This is just the start of how we're going to help you get better update results. I showed the update substates on the slide showing summary reports, and with so many new states beyond in progress, it's very helpful to know what they mean. Some are obvious, like download or install start but a few are worth understanding a bit better. Of course, all of these are covered with even more detail in the Intune documentation at aka.ms slash Intune report docs. So devices in a scheduled state are essentially waiting until the start date or until gradual rollout makes the update available to them. Then they will move to the offer ready state. We're hoping to add a column in the future that will show the projected start date for each device that is in the scheduled state. Offer ready is a key state because it's the last state generated by the deployment service itself. And when we transition to states that come directly from the devices, the state essentially means that everything is configured in Windows updates. So that the next time a device scans Windows updates, the update will be offered. In other words, Windows updates is ready and waiting. Because it's at the transition from cloud generated states to device generated states, you may see a number of devices that appear stuck on this state from time to time. And so we'll talk more about that on the next slide. Restart required is kind of self-explanatory. However, the time for how long a device may stay in that state can vary a lot based on settings and whether the device gets turned off. For example, if you've not configured the deadline policy and update rings, or you set it for a long time, the device can stay in restart required for a quite a while. That's one key reason we recommend setting the deadline policy. Finally, let's talk about safeguard hold. And the key point is that to find out which safeguard hold is affecting a device, this state is a signal to go to the feature update failures report, which will show the actual safeguard hold ID. Now we've had a bug for a while where the IDs weren't being shown, but we've just recently fixed that. So if it wasn't there for you before, check again. We should be showing that state now for new safeguard holds going forward. As I mentioned before, devices can appear to be stuck in the offer ready state. And there are a few very common reasons for this that you can look into and often fix. Since devices usually scan Windows updates daily, at least when they're turned on, you shouldn't expect devices to stay in that state for much more than a couple of days. And this applies to all update types, feature updates, expedited updates, and the drivers we're working on now. If you do see some sticking around longer, here are the top three things you can check on to understand why it's still in offer ready. The first is pretty simple. You just see if there's an alert for that device that identifies why the device isn't updating. You can start in the summary report to see if there's an alert, but to get more details, use the failures report. One of these alerts may be insufficient update connectivity, and that's a signal that the device probably hasn't been turned on. In some devices off scenarios, we can't generate that alert. So it's still worth checking the last MDM check-in time or other signals to ensure the device has been active. You can also find safeguard holds here for feature updates. Next is to make sure that your data collection is correctly configured. This is kind of obvious. If data collection is not configured, then we can't see and process client states. 
So we can't report on downloading, installing, ready to restart, and in many cases, even update installed. In Intune, make sure that your devices are assigned to a Windows Health Monitoring Policy that also has the Windows Update Scope selected, as I've shown here. I've actually helped quite a few customers who were confident their devices were configured correctly. And they did have devices in a Windows Health Monitoring Policy, but the Windows Update Scope wasn't selected. This can happen because when you set up Endpoint Analytics, normally a Windows Health Monitoring Policy is created, but with the Endpoint's Analytics Scope set, but not Windows Update. So just seeing that the device is assigned to a Windows Health Monitoring Policy is not enough. You need to double check the Windows Update Scope. Finally, if that's still not it and you have a feature update policy you're working on, you can use the device readiness or update compatibility reports to see if there is a known reason the device won't update to the target feature update version. As I'm sure you know, Windows 11 has some increased hardware requirements that prevent some devices from updating to Windows 11. And this report can help find those devices so you can remove them from the Windows 11 policy and put them into a Windows 10 policy targeting the latest Windows 10 feature update. On our road to general availability, we are adding a license check to ensure that the required subscriptions are in place to use some of the advanced cloud-driven update management capabilities. This check should show up by the end of the year and will only be shown to customers who are missing the required subscriptions. So most of you won't ever notice the check. For those who don't have the required license, we'll send another notification in the Intune Message Center. The license requirements and other details are in the Intune documents online. Existing policies will continue to work, but you'll be prevented from creating new expedite policies or enabling a gradual rollout. Driver policies, when we release them publicly, will also require the same license. Everything else will continue to work as it has. Let's now quickly get that latest information on the area we've been working hard to bring to Intune next, driver management. We're currently in a limited private preview with a handful of customers. Overall, driver management is working well and we are getting good feedback on where we can make improvements. The big area we are developing now are the reports needed to operate a driver policy. And we are currently hoping to bring release drivers and reporting publicly in the second quarter of 2023. What we're hearing from our private preview partners is really highlighting how much easier driver management will be in Intune. Of course, we're also getting feedback that is making the feature better and easier to use, and we are already working on those improvements. The driver reporting we are building uses the same basic reports we've built for feature and expedited updates, but expanded to work with a policy that will have multiple driver updates. We're adding fields to identify and filter on the drivers, or even on the devices. This will make it easy to drill down from the all up report to see either the drivers for a specific device or to see the results for a specific driver or class of drivers. And the next big thing we are planning to build is regular monthly quality update management, which we are planning to enable control over each quality update, including non-security optional updates. I hope you agree that we have a lot of great developments that we're delivering this year and also next year, that will give you greater control and better reporting of Windows updates in Intune. Thank you for joining me today.